Good morning. <clears throat> Bit of a windy day today. Southeast is blowing, very typical of this time of the year. One of our newer projects, <clears throat> and it's going to be an ongoing project, is to basically enhance the environmental aspects of each lake. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize that any water body, be it a lake or a river, is divided up into zones. Now, you have what is basically what we call the upland zone, this manicured lawn, going down into the riparian zone, and then, of course, the aquatic zone. The riparian zone is basically a transitional area between the water and dry land. And one of the problems um, we have is because these lawns are manicured, they're fertilized. Once they're fertilized, the runoff of the nitrates and phosphates from the fertilizer enters the water column, runs through a riparian zone into the aquatic zone. And that's where we get the algal blooms that everybody um, dislikes. Now, all the algae is doing is reducing the nutrient load of the water. So all those nitrates and phosphates that have gone in, it's growing on those. To overcome that, what we need to do is we need to introduce higher plants. So my team, my little team is out this morning. We're harvesting water lilies and um, some of the riparian plants. We're not stripping, uh, we're, we're selectively harvesting and we'll introduce those into lakes with no uh, vegetation in the water. This lake, you'll probably uh, recognize it as the one as you come in the main gate. It's a very healthy lake. <clears throat> and you can tell that by the color of the water and the amount of life around it. Got a lot of white-breasted swallows in at the moment. They're hawking insects, so the muchis and the mosquitoes that are hatching in the water, they're taking them out. The, uh, the dense uh, bulrush bed in the middle, that is a very good nesting area for birds like purple herons, um, the moor hens, and of course the cape weavers. They come in um, early spring and they nest in areas like that. The common reed on the side here very often is used by um, the cape weavers. So each area of the lake plays a very important part of the total health. In the water column, of course, you've got fish, unfortunately carp, which are an exotic, and they're one of the major problems we have on the lakes for the simple reason they're bottom feeders. And what they do is they, they stir up the mud and that makes the water turbid or muddy, uh, which isn't very pretty, um, but it also reduces the growth on the bottom of the lake. We've got kerpa in here, uh, tilapia, or orochromus as they're called now. Those are midwater fish and they are also feeding on lava and what have you. Um, so they're supposed to be here. Uh, they're extra limitals to the Cape. We should have the Cape Kerpa, but they're fine. The sharp-toothed catfish is another one of the uh, problems in that in its uh, hunting along the edges, it disturbs the sediments as well and will take out young fish of all species. Actually, also take out young uh, birds, but that's nature, I guess. So what we're doing is we're concentrating on the riparian zone Basically, not clean cutting right to the water's edge. That will act as a buffer for any pollutants uh, like papers or plastic blowing in, easier to find and pick up. It'll reduce the uh, nutrient load going into the water column. It'll provide habitat for all sorts of uh, stuff like dragonflies, um, fish larvae. We'll also use those zo zones. The reed beds, we will manage. Typha can be incredibly invasive, so we will on occasion knock it back, cut it back to a manageable level. Remembering that these are man-made lakes, they started off as a hole in the ground, but over the years they're evolving their own ecologies. And we're just enhancing that by doing projects like this. As I said, it will be an ongoing project. Um, we have introduced um, water lilies into other lakes. The trouble is carpa also voracious feeders on aquatic vegetation. So we will have to continue just add in and add in um, as the carp take out some of them. Nature works on long term, so we have to think long term as well. 
and slowly and surely the lakes are becoming healthier and for the good of the estate of course good of the people that utilize these lakes either for bird watching for angling um, or just being around water because everybody knows it's a soothing uh, place to be okay so great we'll carry on with what we're doing um, I think we're going to move the camera down to an area where we're planting and I'll show you that process so we've moved down to the small lake on the new vines <coughs> this is a classic uh, case in point you'll notice that there's very little vegetation out there one of the major ones of course is the water grass common water grass and all this is doing is growing in what essentially is a, uh, a vegetationless lake by replacing the water grass with the um, basically the riparian zone uh, plants we'll now limit the water grass growth and make for a much healthier lake aquatic plants are actually quite fascinating the water lily for instance if you have a close look at it you'll see that these little buds here grow roots forms a new plant this will eventually break off that'll float away and create its own uh, little colony so all these leaves are potential new plants so hopefully we'll get quite a lot of uh, regrowth from the ones that we're putting in the softer reeds do exactly the same see a little plant developing there that breaks off that floats away takes root on the side and so your riparian zone develops if you have a look at the massive roots these fibrous roots of course they help consolidate the banks that will stop erosion and the erosion comes as a result of the wind forming waves the stone riprap that helps stop, er uh, stop the erosion but by putting plants in we just soften down that wave action so stopping the um, the wave action uh, eroding the banks and of course it's all habitat for all sorts of insects um, dragonfly larva that sort of thing and who doesn't love, love dragonflies fish larva all sorts of things will now take over the riparian zone so as I say an ongoing project just enhancing what we've got making it healthier making the environment much more varied from this hopefully within a few years we'll have a living environment like the one that we took the uh, water lilies out of okay so if you uh, enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up please any comments we're always happy to uh, answer any questions you may have <laughs>